Fire alarms are everywhere. Pretty much every modern building is equipped with a fire protection system of some sort, and these devices are so common that we tend to not even notice them. Something you may or may not have noticed is that voice evacuation fire alarm systems are becoming increasingly common. These systems, unlike traditional horns, have the ability to convey information to occupants of a building through pre-recorded messages or live paging. Today we're going to be discussing why these systems are installed and when they're necessary. At one point in time, fire alarm systems consisted mainly of audible horns only, which could only convey information by being on or off. Fire alarm notification has improved significantly in the past decades, from the requirement of visual strobes to the rise of these voice alarm systems. Unlike standard systems, voice evacuation systems use speakers to notify occupants of an emergency. These speakers can play pre-recorded messages in an emergency, which has been shown to increase the likelihood that occupants respond to an emergency alarm. Crowd response is a major factor in getting people to respond to a fire alarm. Having an alarm that informs occupants of a situation and actually directs them is very effective in getting a large group of people to respond to a situation. According to research done by Brian Piggott of the Fire Research Center and published by David Cantor of Surrey University, when ordinary fire alarm bells, that is, audible-only signals were used, occupants only evacuated 13% of the time. In contrast, when voice messages were provided to occupants, occupants evacuated 75% of the time. That's a significant difference, and certainly one that can make the difference between life and death in an emergency. Here's a live demonstration of this phenomenon. As you can see from this clip, when a fire alarm bell is activated, occupants are a little confused and look for others to take action first, and don't respond once they see that other people are not concerned. On the other hand, in another scenario, when an individual gives instructions to the occupants, they pretty much immediately evacuate. As you can see, they all hear the alarm, but they don't really react. Three and a half minutes after the alarm has been set off, a lady finally gets up from her chair. But only to get a drink for herself. It's not until a further two minutes has passed that one of the participants actually gets up and leaves the room to find out what's happening. The alarm bell sounds. So it out. Yeah. <laughs> your attention, please. The fire alarms have been activated, so can you please make your way to the fire exit? Leaving a personal belonging. Shortly after the alarm sounds, and the fire warden has entered the room giving clear instructions, the room is empty. That's compared with the five and a half minutes that it took the first group to leave proving how differently people will react in a situation given more information. In a similar way, voice evacuation systems are more effective at inciting a response from occupants. As you can see from this example, when the fire alarm system is activated here, the occupants listen to the message and take action almost immediately. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this messaging is just one element of voice evacuation systems that's made them more prevalent in recent years. Voice evacuation systems also provide a way for fire departments or other first responders to talk directly to building occupants and provide live information through the fire alarm system. This allows different parts of a building to receive different instructions in an emergency, which ultimately improves the effectiveness of the fire alarm system. Here's an example of this. When the fire department arrives on scene, they give live updates through the fire alarm speakers. Him it up. Your attention, please. This is the fire department. We're on the scene. We're just checking now. We'll advise you further in a moment. In this case, a fire safety director addresses the building using a fire alarm system. At one point in time, voice evacuation systems were only specified for high-rise buildings or places of assembly, such as theaters, where a large amount of occupants are present. 
Today, however, it's common to see many types of buildings protected with voice evacuation systems, even if it's not explicitly required by code. MIT, for example, has its own fire alarm system requirements for all of its buildings, many of which are stricter than actual building code. MIT no longer allows the installation of horn strobes in any new building simply because voice systems are much more versatile. More jurisdictions are imposing requirements for these systems. It's common in some cases to see buildings with horn strobes in some parts of the building and voice evacuation in the parts of the building that are considered areas of assembly. Let's talk about code. When are voice evacuation systems actually required? If we take a look at NFPA 72, which is the National Fire Alarm and Signaling Code, you'll see there's actually no information as to what type of buildings have to have voice evacuation systems. NFPA 72 just provides the specifications that those systems have to follow if they're required, but who actually requires those systems? The answer to that question is state and local governments. As we know, the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution states that any federal law will supersede state or local law, but currently there's no federal laws about voice evacuation systems, so therefore, by the Tenth Amendment, that decision is to be made by the states. Different states will have different regulations and requirements on voice evacuation systems, and different jurisdictions within each state will also have different requirements. For example, MIT. Most state building codes are based off of the International Building Code. In fact, here in Massachusetts, our building code is the International Building Code with some amendments to it. According to the International Building Code, emergency voice alarm communication systems are required in the following occupancies. Group A occupancies, that is, places of assembly, with an occupant load of 1,000 or more. Any high-rise building, special amusement buildings, and any Group E occupancy with 100 or more people. A Group E occupancy is any educational building, so that means that all new schools by the International Building Code must have voice evacuation systems. Here is the IBC's requirements for voice evacuation systems. As you can see, they must be designed and installed in accordance with NFPA 72. At the end of the day, the International Building Code is just a set of guidelines, and it's up to state and local governments to actually enforce these codes. For this reason, standards will change heavily from state to state, and even jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Voice evacuation systems are more expensive than standard horn strobes, but they're also very adaptable. Horn strobes can only do one thing, while voice evacuation systems can play pretty much any tone or message, meaning they can be customized and changed as time passes. Also, in many cases, evacuation fire alarm systems can double as audio systems. You may see that music plays through fire alarm speakers in some cases, which allows buildings to just have one audio system and save money. Speaking of audio systems, why not just use a standard speaker or audio system in place of a voice evacuation fire alarm system? If a building already has a PA system, why not just use that to page in an emergency? Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. A standard PA system is not a life safety system, and it's not installed or wired to be one either. Fire alarm circuits are all monitored, and the equipment is compliant with strict standards. If power were to fail, fire alarm systems have battery backups that'll keep them running. PA systems, on the other hand, are not necessarily designed with these considerations in mind. There you have it. That's why voice evacuation systems exist. I hope you've learned something today about these critical systems. Fire alarm systems may not always be noticeable, but they're always there keeping the building safe. Sometimes, if you're attentive, they just might even talk to you. Thank you for watching, and take care.